Hi guys, and welcome back to Risha on Demand. This is Ashley, and thanks so much for stopping by today. So, today's video is going to be a little bit differently than how we normally do it. I decided to sit down and do a voiceover while you guys watch Keith and I struggle our way through building a hoop house. Now, there are plenty of tutorials on how to build a cattle panel hoop house, so we didn't want to bore you guys with that. A couple I recommend are Faith Family Homestead. Dom and her children did a marvelous job. Um, and I believe there's like quite a few others that you can choose from. Um, but what I wanted to come talk to you guys today about is how God in his infinite wisdom will give you exactly what you need when you need it. Now little background on how we ended up on the homestead you guys are seeing us build now. Keith and I got married and we lived in the home that he inherited from his father that was built in the 1950s for his mother. A beautiful love story um, of a father taking care of his family that maybe we'll tell you at another time. But out of that love came our first home together. That home was located in the city limits of New Orleans, Louisiana, right on the outskirts, actually, but within the metro New Orleans area. Thus, it came with a very, very, very small um, lot. I believe our acreage was just under a fourth of an acre. It was a corner lot, so it did give us a little bit of breathing room on that front, but as far as the land is concerned. By the time you factor in the house and the driveway and the chicken run area, there really wasn't much area to expand for bigger gardens and chickens, livestock, or anything like that. Any more livestock other than chickens, rather. So we decided to make the best of it, and we turned pretty much our entire front yard into growing space for something. We grew herbs in the front um, garden beds, we put in vegetable garden beds on the front lawn. We grew satsumas and Meyer lemons and figs on trees that we planted as part of the landscape. And it really was a beautiful little home that we built. Our chickens took up most of what we consider our side yard because our backyard was much more of an alley for um, our HVAC system and things like that, more so than growing space, growing space opportunity. And we'd settled into our lifestyle there, and that was going to be what it was going to be. We were totally happy with that, totally content with that, but still dreaming, as we all do on this homesteading journey. So fast forward to March of 2022. So we got married in September of 2020. So March of 2022, um, the housing market went bananas and my goodness, we could get almost triple what we put into our home with the renovations that we did on our own, which you can look back on our channel and see a little bit of that, a little bit of the chaos we lived in in order to get that done. But um, we decided to put our house on the market because a piece of property in southern Mississippi, which is about 45 minutes away from where we both worked in Metairie, Louisiana, um, came available. And it was owner finance, which we actually were looking for that because we're kind of trying not to be so dependent on major corporations like banks and things. But that's a conversation for another time. Um, we jumped on the property. Um, you guys saw us buy the property. And um, we sold our home, and it sold within hours of being on the market. It was a pretty seamless process. We didn't have any issues with inspections or anything like that. Um, however, as soon as we closed on selling our property, that's when all the problems started with our new property. So first of all, with the housing market going bananas, pricing started going through the roof. So now... Our healthy budget was very minuscule when it comes to building. We wanted to build a pole barn home. 
That's something we've been interested in just because it comes along with a lot of features. It comes standard with a lot of features that we both really, really love. And we couldn't get contractor bids. We designed the home. We had our our bid plans. We sent them out to various vendors, various general contractors, various home builders, um, various um, steel building or metal building manufacturers who would in, essentially erect the shell that will become our home in the form of a metal building. We sent it out to various framers, woodworkers, um, carpenters, countertop, cabinetry, electrical, HVAC, and we got back a handful of bids, but not nearly enough to put together a proper budget for a home construction plan. And if you know anything about building a home or any building, um, you're pretty much at a standstill with that. So we switched to our plan B, which was to put a manufactured home on the property for the time being and general contract our own build at a much slower pace. Um, However, in the course of going through all of the paperwork and all of the approvals and everything needed, because this land that we bought was raw land, so we had to pay for um, site valuations for our septic systems and um, well diggers to come out and evaluate everything and surveyors. We spent quite a deal of money (laughs) at this point. Um, We found out at the very last second, mere weeks from having our home delivered, that Due to a very, very, very old buried covenant, we could not put a manufactured home on our property, and we were devastated. We'd done our due diligence, and still somehow we'd missed that. And so now here we were, late, late August, and our time in our rental was coming to an end. We were supposed to be out of our rental by September 30th. And we'd been there since March. Of course, we were struggling. We turned to God in prayer. And this home that we are in now that you see us building on um, came available. And while it is not ideal, it is in the city limits or the corporate limit, rather, of um, an incorporated city. It does have um, neighbors very close. It did come with a lot of things that we did like like large lot sizes conveniences that we were used to in the city as but with a wide open feel and the thing that we noticed is a lot of our neighbors were doing things that we were interested in doing they had chickens or they had various livestock they had gardens they had large open yards with plenty of room for little ones to run around and we started to think we can make this work And so we pulled the trigger and we bought this home just in the nick of time. I mean, we closed on September 20th and we moved out of our rental starting September 23rd and we were out by the 30th. And the more I sit and ponder on how this isn't the wide open space of 20 plus acres in unincorporated land that has zero restrictions and no neighbors that you can see rather I was like, wow, God is so perfect in his perfect timing and his perfect knowledge and his infinite wisdom. This is not where we dreamed we would be. However, this is exactly where we need to be at this time in our lives. We learned so much on that little fourth of an acre lot that we had in the city and We're taking that knowledge here and in a fraction of the time that it took us in our previous property, we started to set up infrastructure that will make having the livestock that we want and the gardens that we want a much easier process without the hassle of having to deal with um, no amenities, no utilities, no easily accessible knowledge because one thing that we gained with this home was a community, a community of people who are so open and so loving and so willing 
to come over and lend us a hand when they see us lifting a heavy board or give us some knowledge of some of the history of the home we live in. Speaking of the home, of course it would be us to find the 85-year-old farmhouse that used to have tractor parking underneath it, but they closed it in to make it a two-story home. This home we plan on cultivating and adding so much to this land, but we look forward to learning. We look forward to the lessons that are available in the trees on the property, the old magnolias that have seen so many wonderful things that we can only dream of. We look forward to learning the patience that it takes to learn the skills to not jump out there and get something you really can't maintain. The more I think about had we been given the 20 plus acres we dreamed of and the land and the infinite possibilities, would we be able to complete our debt-free journey? Something that's very, very important to both of us that we don't talk about a lot here, but Keith and I have both had some life experiences that have taught us the gift that financial freedom gives you. And that's something that I don't think we could accomplish if our mind frame was set on putting in the infrastructure for a larger piece of property, putting in perimeter fencing around acres and acres of land, trying to make sure that there's water and there's building upkeep in barns that are much larger than we have the capability of keeping together ourselves, being that both of us still work outside of our home. I think it's interesting to think about what would our lives look like? Would we be able to take family vacations if we so choose? Would we be able to give our animals the love and care that we want to? Or would we be tempted to cut corners for the sake of saving an expense line? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that it's interesting that when I decided to share my homesteading journey, the caption I put on the banner art of our channel was building a homestead right here in the city. And not too long after that, we sold our home in the city and we were looking to build a homestead out away from the city. But God saw fit to place us right back in a larger home on a larger piece of property, but yet still in the city. Just some things that I went through my mind when I sat and pondered with God in my worship place of choice, which is my garden. It's just a happy place that I have that um, provides for me as well as I tend to it. And to me, that is the perfect place to meet with our Lord. Anyway, I just wanted to share that story with you guys because so much so we focus on the limitations that come along with what we have. We don't have enough space. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough land. We don't have enough animals. We don't have enough business or we don't have enough customers or we don't have enough knowledge. But I think the beauty is to use to your advantage the things that you do have and the things that you do have access to and while in that place of using what you do have, learning what you need to learn, Keith and I have embraced this notion of eternal learning. And we're ever evolving as a family, as a couple. And um, it's a very, very beautiful thing. Anyway, guys. So as you can see, Keith and I are really, really struggling with this hoop house. Um, another thing I wanted to address is our absence. You guys, I spoke about this in the previous video, but um, I'm really going to try to be a lot better at recording and um uploading but the editing is going to be a lot different i really want you guys to see the raw real side of our lives and i don't want it to be covered up with a bunch of fancy editing and a bunch of fancy transitions i kind of just want to record the footage 
and put it out there and let you guys experience it. Experience our struggles and our triumphs and our joy and our sadness when that happens. Experience our sorrow when there's loss on our homestead and our happy times when we get to sit down at a meal prepared with the ingredients that we grew here, with the work that we did with our hands. And while our lives aren't set up exactly the way we would like, with us not being able to devote 100% of our attention and energy to this beautiful land, I just want to show you guys how we do it. It may not be the prettiest and packaged well, and I don't always know the right words to say, <laughs> but I want you guys to see how we homestead, how we cultivate the land that's given to us, and how we just do this thing called life one day at a time. Oh, such beauty and such the simple things of life, and we've decided to enjoy them, take our time, spend time together, and yes, Keith and I spend a ton of time together. I've gotten that sentiment a few times from various social media platforms that we have. Do we ever get tired of spending time together? We're always together. And I don't think that there will ever come a time, at least I hope not, that we will tire of one another in the way of spending time together. We enjoy doing menial tasks and running errands together. It makes the time go by faster, even if we're bickering like the married couple that we are. Anyway, guys, I think that's all I wanted to say. Back to the video. We are nearing very close to completing this hoop house, and I look forward to sharing it with y'all. As you can see here, Keith is cutting the ends of our cattle panels with his sawzall. One thing that we noticed when our cattle panels arrived from Tractor Supply, we had them delivered, is that the ends were not flat and it was causing our curve not to be correct. But he's fixing that the way he does. All right, guys. So that's about how far we've gotten to the hoop house this morning. Yep. It's time to go in and have some lunch brunch Breakfast. lunch because <laughs> we came out here first thing this morning but let me just show you what all we got done and yep. then we'll see y'all next time all right guys so so far we've gotten the support stakes in um that's what you saw us do first um this is just a frame you've seen some people build hoop houses all the time this isn't a tutorial we're not doing anything extraordinary the only thing that i will say we are doing is these stakes here driven into the ground um we aren't going to have to do like a ridge line uh support because we don't have to worry about things like snow load or anything down here but we do have to worry about hurricane winds so um while most people build their hoop houses to, to sustain between 60 and 80 mile an hour winds we very regularly can get 120 plus mile an hour winds during a hurricane so um we're taking time to make sure we stake as much things down as we can. We'll probably put some strapping down where you like wrap some strapping down and anchor it to the ground, bolt it to the ground. We'll probably do that at some point, even if we don't get it done today or at this time. We'll definitely get that done before hurricane season comes out. And the way we're going to attach our plastic, um, we'll show y'all um, either after it's done or while we're doing it. We're gonna use furrowing strips. Those are our furrowing strips way over there. And we're gonna attach them to this board here to where we can unscrew it and remove the plastic during a hurricane. Um, if it's gonna be bad enough. Because what you're trying to do is keep the wind from getting inside to lift it up. So, um, yeah. So, that's what we have done today. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video, this time lapse of us working on the hoop house while I talk you guys through a couple things that have been pondering, that I've been pondering in my times of sit, sitting and visiting with the Lord about our, our new property here and everything we have going on. Anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Yep. Until next time. Bye, Bye. guys.